Hi guys, this is a no-nonsense strategy for you to get to round 100 easily in Liberty Falls. We're going to be covering everything you need to know in this video, so if you're a beginner player, we've got you covered. If you're a pro player, we have you covered too. The video is broken up into different segments based on what strat we're going to be running in that part of the game. So we've got a bunch of recommendations to run through for the early game, which I would define as rounds 1 to 30 or maybe 35. And then we'll move on to the mid game, which is a new strategy, which takes us from 35 to about let's say 45 to 50 and then the strat from 50 is the same one that we're going to be taking all the way to 100 and this is an extremely quick strat so you can honestly get to around 100 here in just a couple of hours maybe like three hours or even faster if you're playing really quickly so let's talk about the early game for your loadout i would recommend spawning in with the asg shotgun with a suppressor on it you can absolutely use other weapons if you'd prefer to but the suppressor attachment specifically is something that I'd say is essential for this strat because salvage through the whole video here is going to be the aim of the game. Like we're really going for as much salvage as we can at all times and the suppressor gets you more salvage. For your first, let's say five rounds, I'd recommend staying in the spawn and just meleeing this vending machine every round to see if you can get some free goodies. There's a chance that it gives you a ray gun. This is actually a side quest, but it's also possible to get perks from this or just a bit of salvage or more points. Once you hit the round five mark, you've got a choice to make. We can either open the left side of the map or the right and whichever side we open is going to mean that we have to do this strat on the other side of the map. So what we're going to do is keep the left side of the map closed and we're going to open on the right. This is because I think that doing it this way round is just a bit faster and loads of different high round players have all tried different strats with these doors open and closed and I'll link some of their videos below but in my view this is just a slightly faster variation. So we're going to keep that door shut and open up on the right. Now between rounds let's say 5 and 20 you're going to want to be doing as many side easter eggs as you can while you start powering up a little bit and the first thing that i'd recommend you work on is doing the free jet gun easter egg if you don't know how to do it i've got a full guide on my channel which is linked in the description and in the corner of the screen right now but you should be able to get that done in just about 10 minutes or so it really doesn't take too long and once you've got the jet gun you can start thinking about how you're going to get the ray gun now what i would not do is i would not recommend you spend a bunch of money on the box for example to try and get the ray gun randomly because at this lower round, your chances are just too bad. But what you can do is a bunch of other side quests, such as the bowling side quest, which I explain how to do in my full Liberty Falls side quests video. And doing that the first time, you might get some points or something. You might get a blue gun. Like, it might not be that great. But I discovered on stream that you can actually repeat that Easter egg. And the second time you go in, as you can see in the clip here, I managed to get a ray gun from it. So that made a really big difference in my game, not having to spin the box at all. However, obviously, you can totally spin the box later in your game if you still don't have it once you start transitioning into mid game. Other side Easter eggs that I would recommend you do include the free Deadshot Easter egg because it's so easy. And in order to do that, I'd probably pick up a weapon that one of the random zombies will drop on the floor when you spawn in. So this isn't going to come from you buying a weapon and spending points on that, but rather just something you can get for free. And that'll get you your free Deadshot. But I would advise you not to do that free Deadshot Easter egg until you've bought your first three perks. Because if you go down later in the run, those are the perks that you're going to keep. And my recommendation would be that you buy Jug, quick revive and speed cola more or less in that order but you can vary the order should you so desire now in terms of perk recommendations after that they're actually not all that important it's really those core three that make a really big difference to this strat and so if you get them for free from the vending machine for example if you start hitting that in later rounds or you get them from some of the side quests that you're doing then great that's a nice added bonus but it's not going to make the whole thing collapse if you don't have elemental pop for example finally the last easter egg i'd really recommend you make sure to do is the head on the church with the explosive because it's going to give you salvage it's going to give you points and it's so easy like this thing takes what 15 seconds or something to just cook a nade and then pick up what drops and you can get some support streaks from this as well so you might get your first mutant injection which is really useful because that's going to be a big part of the strategy that we have coming up a little later now as you advance through some of these rounds you're going to see sam trials spawning into your map and i would really strongly recommend that you do these because they're going to give you a bunch more rewards, so that's even more opportunities to get the ray gun, first of all. It's also an opportunity to fill out the other parts of your loadout that might be lacking in any given moment, whether it's points or salvage or whatever. But a word of warning with the SAM trials is sometimes you're going to get a really awkward SAM trial, and 
There is absolutely no value in your game of trying to be a hero and then dying on round 22 or something and just feeling like you've wasted a bunch of time and now you have one fewer self revives to use because you only get three self reses, remember? So just be careful. If it gives you a really awkward sand trail and you're like, Ugh, that's gonna really risk killing me, just don't do it. There's no downside. There's no consequence. You just spent a little bit of money on the trial, but you'll earn it back. That's fine. And you being able to have your self res for later in your game is much more valuable. So be extra careful anytime you're doing a Sam trial and try and grind through several of those to get yourself a bunch of rewards, especially in those earlier rounds when it's easier for you to complete them. Now, as you do this, you're going to start feeling a lot more powerful pretty quickly. And you're probably wondering, should I spend my points on packing the jet gun or what should I do? I would say if you get the ray gun, you can basically dump all of your points into pack a punching the ray gun itself rather than the jet gun initially. And I would also say making sure you have tier three armor is a really good idea early in your game. It's just a life jacket, essentially, and you may as well get it sooner rather than buying extra perks like Melee Macchiato, for example, which isn't going to have a direct impact on your survival in those first 30 rounds. But that's if you have the ray gun. If you get to round 20 or something, maybe you just started by upgrading your shotgun, for instance, and maybe you upgraded its rarity once or twice, but it's starting to really feel weak, then it might honestly be a good idea to just go over to the mystery box and try and get yourself a purple or a gold weapon, even if it isn't the ray gun, because then you're going to be able to save some salvage, and salvage is really important to us here, and it'll just be a big damage boost for your weapon at base anyway. And you could do this earlier in your game too, like you could just try and get a gold weapon or a purple weapon sooner from a free reward or from a lucky box spin or something. Thing, like that's totally valid. But once you've got one of those, that's what I would put the points towards. That's what I would start upgrading so that you can survive those first 30 rounds, let's say. And then as soon as you get the ray gun, that's when you flip back into just completely pack a punching that to max as soon as you can. So once you start approaching round 30, you're going to be having a lot of manglers spawn in. So be very mindful of those. And we're going to start paying a lot more attention to our salvage count. This is because our target by let's say round 45 or round 50 is to get over 30,000 and salvage. Like that's my sort of mental model of how I think about what I'm looking for there. But if we're at round 30 right now, you've probably got a lot less. And so you need to find a way to bridge that gap and get from round 30 to round 50. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to enter the mid game and deploy a new strat. And this is a strat that is going to eat up quite a lot of your points. So it's not something that I would recommend in the earlier rounds necessarily. You could do it here or there just to get through some sticky situations, but I wouldn't be rinsing this since round 15 or something because it'll just be really expensive. So let's dive into the mid game strategy. This is a slow but very safe strat, which means that you, if you wanted, could indefinitely keep this going to get further into the rounds. That's totally fine and it will work later. It's just that the strat that we're going to be doing for end game is incredibly fast, like it's crazy quick. That's how we're going to get that sub three hour round 100. And so from my perspective, I want to minimize the time I'm spending on this mid game strat so I can get to the end game strat sooner. But it really is salvage dependent. What you're going to do is come to the spawn area and ideally at the start of a round, you want the trap that is in the spawn to be reset off cooldown, ready for you to activate. You'll start the round by hoovering up any salvage that's on the floor. You just need to sprint over that and then get your jet gun out and use it on these first couple of zombies until you get to about 20 to 15 remaining on your jet gun meter and then get ready to do a big blast with your alt fire to clear the zombies around you. As soon as you've done that, run over to the trap here and activate it so the big purple floor electricity starts firing up. You can then run around in that purple electricity and if you're moving you're going to take less damage from the trap but if you're stationary you're going to take more damage so make sure you stay mobile but the trap itself will take out any super sprinters that you have which start spawning at round 40 by the way and they will also help you take down manglers but they're not very effective on manglers so what i would recommend is while the manglers are being stunned and stuff by the trap you just lay into them with your ray gun and that will mean that things go a lot faster now as soon as the trap is off you're going to be approaching the end end of the round and so you need to do one of a few things. You could either keep like one zombie alive and go grab some perks or do stuff around the map that you need to do or run around the area a little bit and grab some salvage or just kill off every single zombie that's remaining and no matter what you do, you're ultimately going to end up ending that round just after the trap stops and so you're then going to be in waiting for the trap to cool down mode and that's why we might want to delay just a tiny bit at the end there but then as that new round starts, the trap will come off cool down, you'll have your jet gun at full as well and you'll be able to do the same thing. Grab the salvage, use the jet gun to suck the zombies initially, get down to about 15, 
do a blast, and then run over to the trap and activate it. This will be fantastic for salvage gathering. And so, like I said at the start of the video, we're aiming for about 30,000 salvage. If you've got 30k or more, you're going to be in a pretty good position to start the strategy that is our final high round strat. And my recommendation would be to do that on about round 50. If you do it before, you just might be a bit low on salvage. So when you're ready to move to the end game strat, get one zombie alive if you can, and then run all the way around the sort of middle part of the map and go through the bowling alley and then double back towards the spawn. But do not buy that door, obviously. In that alleyway is a crafting bench, and we're going to be making a lot of use of that through the strategy, and that's what all this salvage is for. Now, to begin with, I'm going to quickly talk about vermin rounds here, and then we'll dig into the zombie rounds when you're doing the high round strat. So the vermin rounds i'd recommend standing here for just because it's going to be the fastest spawns but even then the spawns are very slow it's going to take maybe five six minutes just to get through a vermin round so they're boring it's not you it's just the way the game works but by standing here you at least mean that they're sort of funneled towards you because they'll only come from two directions and also the nice thing about this is that if you go down when you're in this area at any time the crafting bench is right there so you can just recraft yourself revive but anyway let's talk about these zombie rounds when the rounds start similar to what we were doing in the spawn we're going to be using the jet gun initially and we're going to be getting it down to around 10 ammo remaining and whether or not you use the blast here is somewhat personal preference I'm not going to be doing it in the clips here because I'm worried that it's going to be on cooldown still when I need it after we do what we're about to do. And I don't want that to happen, right? I don't want it to be overheated and inaccessible to me in a moment of need. So I always keep about 10 remaining so that in a sketchy situation, I can use that alt fire and it can get me out of trouble. But you can play around with using the blast a little if you want to just do that at your own risk. Regardless of whether you're blasting or not, doing the suck is going to mean that there's a bit of salvage on the floor that you can grab. So try and sort of navigate through that if you can. But you're going to be specifically looking for a mutant injection on the floor. And this is the crux of this entire strategy. So if you see a mutant injection, that's your number one priority. Go and grab it and you're immediately going to go into it and turn into a mangler. You then need to just melee the zombies as much as you can. Just hack and slash your way through them. And any manglers that are there, as well hack and slash until they're all dead and the manglers have a stronger chance to drop another mutant injection which you can then go straight into and use as soon as you end your first mutant injection however if you don't get a mutant injection from the manglers that's what all this salvage is for you're gonna go to the crafting bench craft yourself a mutant injection get in the mutant injection use it to kill all the manglers try and get another mutant injection from them if they don't give you one go to the crafting bench craft one etc and the nice thing about doing the strat from around round 50 is that one mutant injection is more or less enough to take out an entire round of zombies so you might have a very brief pause between rounds where you can either grab one off the floor or you can go to that crafting bench and grab it without being swarmed by a million zombies and then when the new round starts we'll do the jet gun thing again so we'll suck the zombies get the ammo down to around 10 and then switch back over to going to the mutant injection use that to clear the rest of the round start the next round with a jet gun etc now the one warning i need to give you about this is that if you start running out of salvage this strat is obviously going to fail and so in that scenario i would recommend going back to the spawn area and using that trap and basically doing what you were doing before and just trying to get as much salvage from that as you can and using that to help you stay safe while your salvage is let's say below 5k or something and then when you're above let's say 10k again then you're back in business and you can keep the strat going so give it a try and i'd love to hear in the comments if you have any extra ways that you can optimize this to make it even faster or safer